Have you ever looked at a gas station canopy and thought, I wonder what's up there? Well, today we're actually going to be going on top of a canopy to troubleshoot some lights that aren't working. No, 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 no. That is really scary, actually. Not many people really know how complex gas station wiring is. And if you've been following my videos for a while, you know that we've been focusing on gas stations for the time being. So our mission today is twofold. One, troubleshoot about 10 canopy lights that are out at this gas station. And two, to investigate the lights because we are going to be actually replacing all of them soon. It's almost the end of the day, so let's hope this problem is easy to fix. So we got our lift in the back of the truck here. We got our canopy lights. Uh, here, come on inside. Let's try to find the controls for the canopy lights, which actually might be in the electrical room. Looks like everything's working good in here. That's a relief. Yes, yeah, so if I remember correctly, do not touch. This one is the canopy lights. That's what goes on every night. Supposedly 10 of them are not working, which tells me that there must be a problem with one of the circuits somewhere because that's a lot of lights to stop working. We were maybe about a year ago getting all the lights to work and only two of them didn't work and we fixed them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can see there's one in there. Some of these are metal halide, so they take a little while to actually start up which could easily mean that someone made a mistake. Now, the pattern at which they're actually out is gonna give us a clue as to where in the circuit is, is messed up. So we'll take that into account. We don't quite have 10 that are not working, but I'm suspecting the bulbs because if we had a certain pattern, half of them this way, half of them that way, were not working, then I would suspect something wrong with the circuit. I'm not suspecting that at this point because it's so sparse. What's more likely the case is that these few bulbs have gone out over time. But we're about to check that and we're also about to just get a load of what's on top of this canopy because we're going to be replacing the canopy lights. Let me lift from that side. I'm getting sick of this hat. Reminds me of a fisherman or something. Let me know in the comments. Recommend me some good gear. What's a good sun hat that has maximum coverage and maximum style? down, let it push up. Here we go. All right, so this is the top of a canopy. If you've ever wondered what the top of a gas station canopy looks like, this one's actually quite clean. There's these junction boxes on the top. Now because these are metal halide bulbs, which require a high voltage output, you have these weird boxes and it's because they have a mini transformer inside each one. Now based on how the conduits run, I'm just gonna take a quick look at my pictures of the underside of the canopy to see if any of the same strings are all out because that could indicate something's wrong with the circuit. But like I said, once I do that, I'm gonna check the voltage, and if I have regular line in voltage, it just means that the bulbs are out. We gotta get some replacements. We are going to be replacing all of these fairly shortly, but it's still gonna take a couple months to get the new lights in, and 10 or eight, whatever amount of lights, it's still too many lights to be out all at once. So we might still try to get them some replacement bulbs. Based on how these are installed, is also gonna determine what accommodations we'll need for our new canopy lights. So it's a little investigation mission as well. So for starters, this one is supposedly out. So let's take a look at it. If anyone's wondering, this seems to be an abandoned circuit that goes to the lighting assembly. But the other side of it, it has a driver. So. Ouch. 
So what I got in here, be really careful because the circuit's still alive. We have our line in, which is, uh, I think yellows actually are neutral. Then we have our black. The black goes down into the ballast. There's a capacitor involved. Honestly, I don't know enough about metal halide lights. Uh, let's check the supply voltage. That's really what I'm worried about. If it's the supply voltage, I'll change the bulbs. If the ballast is out and it doesn't work, we'll switch to retrofit LEDs, which I already did to one of these lamps. So one of these I actually opened up because it was all exploded on the inside. And I bypassed it so that it was just an LED. We might have to do that for all of them here. My meter, hopefully you can see that. Now, I'm just gonna take a little peek without doing anything too controversial. I got one 119 ish to ground. And this one has almost no nothing to ground. Now we have our 120 to neutral, 120 to ground. So that's definitely neutral. And we, we have our supply voltage, which is 120 volts approximately. And so I might as well do at least one little check of the output voltage through this capacitor. So capacitor, and then let's just go ground. We've got 302 volts AC. Let's check it to neutral just for the heck of it. But we got 300 volts AC. So that's what this thing is outputting. And for my limited understanding working with these things, that should be normal. So again, points towards the bulb. Let's check a couple more of these out. So according to my picture, the lights that are out, this one and this one are both out. Somehow this one isn't. Look at that. These things really need to be swapped. I hear a slight buzzing coming from this one, which is a little sus. There's a slight buzzing with this one. That might just be part of the transformer. The other one was just louder. Even this one has a little bit of a buzz. If you like my videos, Okay, <laughs> that is really scary actually. So that is some super freaky stuff right there. However, as I was saying, if you like my videos, like and subscribe. But what I really want to encourage you right now is comment on the video. Your encouragement helps me make these videos and it also helps the videos get spread out. Just leave a comment right now. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you'd like to see in my videos. And let's take a look at this uh, scariness right here. I don't know if you can hear this. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to get close to that. I don't know if you can hear that noise right there. The sizzling. The slow sizzling. But that is a transformer. The wire squished on there. It's also worthy of mentioning that these old canopy lights, the actual wires coming up into this junction box that you might be able to see down here, are cloth insulation. That's right. The copper explody part, which isn't supposed to touch metal, is insulated by the same thing that your iPhone cord is wrapped with. They used to get away with some pretty scary stuff back in the day. I'm going to have to tell us to shut this one off before I take a closer look. We are off. I don't know how much this was shorting, if any. Let's take a look at this. It's not physically hot to the touch. This transformer, or ballast, or whatever you call it, sure is. Let's take a look for any other compromised pieces. This is that cloth insulation I was talking about. I don't know how well the camera picks it up. but uh, All it takes is this to bend back and forth a little bit, and then you got exposed copper. That's what old school wiring looks like. So, I don't see anything else glaringly bad. It honestly looks like just the insulation on here is squished so bad that it was on the verge of arcing right to the metal of this transformer. At least that's what it sounded like. Maybe I'm overreacting. Let me tape this weak spot up, and then we'll power it back up and we'll check the voltage. Of course, Telus threw me up the crappiest brand of electrical tape. The throwaway stuff. Whatever. This is better than nothing. These will be replaced soon. Probably already have said that. If we can edit that part out. Better than nothing. Let me get my neutral exposed a little bit so I can stick my leads in there the way I like. You can just hear with the crustiness of the wire that it's just old wire. I can see the metal of the wire nut in there. So that should be good enough to check voltage. Let me get the lights turned back on. And you can still hear that noise. That's pretty sketchy. I probably shouldn't be touching this thing without PPE, so 
Let's move on to see what we have at the other ones. If we have line voltage on everything, I'm just gonna replace bulbs and probably bypass ballasts, honestly. We should probably just gut them and get LED replacements for every single one we have in here. The fact is, we're this far down the length of the chain and we still have voltage. By the way, in case you're wondering, I had them turn it off. I put my leads in there in a good way and then I had them turn it back on so I could verify there's voltage. There is on this string, there is on that string. That means that it all points to the bulbs and better yet, to kill more birds with one stone. The bulbs and the transformers. I think they all gotta go. They're old, they're using poor outdated wiring methods and I have switched one of these out before that was exploded and I know where to get the LED equivalents. If there's another cause for the problem, then it's nothing that just having some number 12 THHN wire and the typical tools I have on my van aren't going to fix. So in other words, it's nothing I can't fix anyways, but the best thing to do is just blanket LED, LED everywhere. And if there's still one that's not working, you can troubleshoot from that point. So I have the lights off right now. I'm going to cover this one up. I'm going to take some pictures of the lighting assembly and maybe we'll go up underneath to one light so I can take some pictures of that for the revamp. Nice throw. Send me the crappiest off-brand one. All right, going down. I bet you're wondering what's underneath here. Oh. It's crazy, this one actually looks like it's in good condition. That's short for condition. It does look really cloudy in there and then as you can see there's little burn marks look at that that's a giveaway right there mm -hmm. so totally burnt up bulb i have the spec number right here it looks like i might have just destroyed my level freaking van life man Dude. let's see well i do have a bunch of tools here i guess i can use them yeah, yeah. freaking van man the rental van of shame Still level? Well, I guess that depends on if my box is level. Thanks for watching. That's all I got for today. Let me know in the comments what would you like to see me cover in this channel. And if you'd like to see the follow-up visit to this, where we're going to be getting these lights fixed, and in the future, actually replacing all the canopy lights, then subscribe and stay tuned for that episode. If you like these videos as much as I like making them for you, consider supporting my channel through Patreon. These videos are fun to make, but they're not easy. My goals are to entertain, to educate, and to encourage young people to join the trades. If you support that mission, check out my Patreon. I got a couple different tiers for you to join, depending on your budget level. A statewide storm has shut down many people's power and has shut down many parts of our infrastructure island-wide. We have a tank site that supplies a lot of water on one particular side of this island, where our control panel filled up with six inches of water. We need to go there and replace any parts that are broken so that the people of the island can have water. And we also need to find out what would have caused this control panel to fill up with water. 